Hi, I'm the Octopus Lady. You're watching Alien Ocean, and let's talk about lionfish today, shall we? And did you know they're sometimes called turkey fish? Staying on that holiday theme, because like last month I did the vampire squid for Halloween, and now I'm doing turkey fish this month for Thanksgiving here in America. Tune in next month, we're gonna do Christmas tree worms. I actually didn't choose lionfish this month because of Thanksgiving. It, it just kind of, that was a coincidence. And I'm probably not going to do Christmas tree worms next month either. I'm probably going to do, you know, maybe I will do Christmas tree worms. I'll do some research on them, see if they're interesting enough to make a whole video about. But then like, am I setting a precedent? Will people expect me to make videos about animals based on whatever holiday is happening in a particular month? Will people want me to do a video about like Sergeant Major fish for like Memorial Day? And what of holidays celebrated in other countries? Am I alienating my non-American viewers if I choose animals that only fit thematically with American holidays? And oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. So lionfish are part of the family uh Scorpane Day? I don't know how to pronounce this. Hey Emma? Yes. How do you pronounce this word? That is Scorpinidae or D. Scorpinidae or D. Really? Yes. Okay, thanks Emma. You're welcome. Which gets its name from scorpions because this family is very toxic. Like, I've seen them gaslight each other, they pull the silent treatment on each other all the time. I've seen them just hurl abuse. They say the meanest things to each other. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. I, I overstepped. I shouldn't have done that. I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Wait. Wait, man. Just... I know you got a lot going on with your family right now, but you're my friend, and I care about you, and if you ever need to talk, I'll listen. You know that, right? Yeah, no problem. Come on, bring it in, big guy. Uh-oh. The family of Scorpinidae is comprised of other very venomous fish, including, but not limited to, the stonefish and the scorpionfish. And the lionfish are specifically part of this genus, whose name I don't know how to pronounce. Terrorists? Emma! Terrorists. Terrorists, I was right! And lionfish are found, um, in... Well, okay, they originally came from the Indo-Pacific, but they're in a lot of places they shouldn't be right now, but we'll get into that later. So lionfish are really... they got a lot going on! That coloration, those spines, they are serving looks. Is that how you say it? They're certainly one of the most flamboyant creatures I've had on this channel, besides, I'd say, the mantis shrimp. And unsurprisingly, it has to do with the fact that they are venomous. And I guess I should go over this really quick, even though I really don't care, and also I find this a little confusing. But there is a difference, supposedly, between being poisonous and being venomous. Basically, if you eat a toxic organism and it kills you, then it's considered poisonous. If it stabs you or bites you and then injects toxin into you that it's venomous. So pufferfish are technically poisonous and lionfish are technically venomous. But unless you're a toxicology researcher, I personally don't think it matters in day-to-day -day conversations what word you use. People are going to understand what you're saying even if you use the quote-unquote incorrect word. And like can't you argue that a lot of venomous animals are also poisonous? Like I'm pretty sure if I ate an entire king cobra, its venom would probably still kill me right? So that would make it poisonous. Yes? No? I, uh, lionfish are venomous, whatever, moving on. The venom of the lionfish is stored in their fin spines, of which they have many. Of their 18 dorsal fin spines, 12 to 13 of them are venomous. They have two pelvic fin spines and three anal fin spines. There's probably some joke about anal fin spines in there, but for some reason I'm drawing a blank. Each spine has a barb at the end of it, and it's covered in a thin membrane, and when a lionfish stabs something with these barbs, the membrane ruptures and the venom is injected into the wound. Out of all the fish in Scorpinidae, lionfish have the least potent venom, but don't let that fool you, it can still do damage. There are three grades to lionfish envenomation, which is just a fancy word that means like getting bit or stung by something venomous. Grade one envenomations demonstrate uh, I don't know how to pronounce these words. Emma! Emma, I don't know how to pronounce these words! Sigh. 
color. Echimosis. Cyanosis. Injuration. Edema. Wait, what about that word? IDK. Well, who am I supposed to ask about that word? You. No. Who. Ugh. Hey, Google? What? How do you pronounce this word? This word. Oh my god, you are such a- This word, Google. Erythema. Thanks, Google. And Emma. Whatever. Whatever. Wait, I don't know what any of these words mean. These papers, man, I'm telling you. Okay, so here are all the definitions of the words that were just said, but I'm just gonna blow through this real quick. Grade one, lionfish envenomations usually result in redness in the skin, bruising and swelling. Grade two is when this happens, and grade three, the wound becomes necrotic. You will experience a lot of pain, regardless of how bad the envenomation is, and you will also likely experience stuff like numbness or tingling in the affected area, often for weeks after you got stabbed. There have been some extreme cases where people have experienced paralysis in the limb where the envenomation happened, and some people have died from lionfish stings, but it's mostly small children, the elderly, and those who are immunocompromised, who are at the greatest risk for that. So yeah, don't let junior like, pet any lionfish you come across. Side note, as near as I can tell, the toxin of the lionfish doesn't have a name. Or at least I couldn't find one, and I'm really confused by that, because like, all other toxins I've talked about on this channel have had names. Like tetrodotoxin, and brevitoxin, and demoic acid, and there's no name for lionfish venom. Which is weird, right? Is that weird? That feels weird. Anyway, so all this to say that one of the reasons why lionfish look like this is because it acts as a warning sign. This is called... Uh... Apisematism. Thanks, Emma. And you see it in other animals too, like in butterflies, and blue-ringed octopuses, and badgers, and... B frogs. It's the use of bright and or contrasting colors to signal to any predators nearby that you don't want to mess with me. No, seriously, you really don't want to. Do you see all this? This is all warning signs, my friend. I'm telling you, you're gonna regret this. Yep, see? I told you. Didn't I tell him? But also, and this maybe will sound kind of contradictory, but their appearance might also help them camouflage, making it easier for them to hunt prey. But before I go any further there, we gotta talk about something that isn't so cool about lionfish. They are an invasive species. So invasive species are, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, non-native plants, animals, and other living organisms that thrive in areas where they don't naturally live and cause, or are likely to cause, economic or environmental harm or harm to human, animal, or plant health. Invasive species degrade, change, or displace native habitats, compete with native wildlife, and are major threats to biodiversity. Hey, wait, that still kind of tracks with what happened with Thanksgiving. Quick side note, some of you might have noticed I didn't talk about when lionfish first showed up. Like, I didn't put them on my fossil timeline thing I have. And the reason for that is because I couldn't find any information on that. Not a zip, zilch, zero. Nothing about their fossils or their molecular clocks or whatever. Because it seems that nearly all the research done on lionfish is just about how they're an invasive species. And I guess knowing how long they've been on this planet isn't useful information for that. I couldn't even find a picture of a fossilized one. So, lionfish? You're gonna go in the corner with the magna pinna squid. Sorry, buddy. So I briefly mentioned earlier that lionfish are found in the Indo-Pacific, and that's where they were found for, you know, the entirety of the unknown length of time they've been on this planet. But then, in the 1980s and 90s, they suddenly started showing up along the east coast of the United States. Their population numbers have only grown significantly since then, and they've been causing a lot of problems. Lionfish have spread into the Gulf of Mexico as well, and somehow they've also ended up in the Mediterranean. But for the purposes of this video, I'm mostly going to be focusing on the lionfish found around here here. There's a story I've heard multiple times about how lionfish ended up around here. Maybe you've heard it too. Apparently during Hurricane Andrew, an aquarium that housed six lionfish was destroyed, and in the resulting flooding and storm, they got washed out to sea. Which, when I first heard that, I was like, wow, what are the odds? But as the years have gone on, I found that story a little bit dubious, and when I tried to find the original source, I couldn't. So that might have happened, I don't know, but some research papers said that their appearance was also probably caused by people who got a lionfish to keep in their home aquariums and then didn't want them anymore, so they just threw them in the ocean. Which makes more sense to me, especially since Hurricane Andrew happened in 92, and lionfish were being spotted in the Atlantic Ocean all the way back in 85. And they have pretty successfully colonized the coral reefs in the Caribbean, for a lot of different reasons. Oh, I didn't mean to use the word colonized there. 
I'm gonna leave it in though. They grow faster than most other native fish. They reproduce a lot. They can comfortably live in a wide variety of temperatures, salinities, and depths. Predators aren't much interested in eating them and they're very good hunters. And it's this one that I wanna talk about in detail, mostly because the way they hunt I think is really fascinating. So like I was saying earlier, this wild coloration can actually help them camouflage. They often hunt at twilight and they've been seen swimming between the branches of corals, the spines of sea urchins, and the arms of brittle stars, which when it gets dark out, it can be really hard to tell what is a lionfish and what is like all the other spiny pokey things that stick out from coral reefs. They also flare out their side fins or pectoral fins, which one, corrals prey into corners and crevices so it can't escape, and two, and I think this is really cool, it blocks the view of the lionfish's tail and they move so slowly that it's really easy for prey to not even be aware that a lionfish is headed straight towards them. And lionfish apparently do this thing where they spit jets of water from their mouth at their prey, which confuses it, and in its confusion, the prey often turns to face the lionfish head on, which makes it that much easier for the lionfish to swallow them whole. And we have seen lionfish actually hunt together. They'll approach some prey with their flared out pectoral fins, and once they've been cornered, the lionfish will actually take turns trying to eat the prey, which is polite of them. Lionfish can also eat a lot. Their stomachs can expand to 30 times their original size, and they aren't picky about what they eat. Studies of lionfish stomachs have shown that they eat upwards of 49 different species of fish and 29 different species of invertebrates, and in what I feel adds insult to injury, you can apparently starve a lionfish for three months and it won't die. Robust little guys, aren't you? So what kind of effect have lionfish had on the areas they've invaded? Well, about 10 years ago is when the alarms started to sound about lionfish. You can find a lot of papers from 2009 to 2012 that are like, y'all, there's a lot of lionfish where there shouldn't be. And there was a lot of talk about worst case scenario. And fortunately, it doesn't seem like worst case scenario has come to pass yet. It's been a pretty mixed bag though. There was a lot of talk about the decline in both prey and predator fish populations, and that has happened, but only in some areas around the Atlantic and the Gulf. There was worry that algae would overgrow and kill all the coral reefs because lionfish eat the fish that eat the algae. But again, that's happened in some places, but not in others. And of course, the biggest worry is the complete extinction of entire species because lionfish ate them all or ate all the food that they eat. But near as we can tell, that has not happened at time of recording. And there have also been reports that lionfish populations in areas where they were first discovered have declined pretty significantly. So maybe that's a pattern we're gonna see more of in the future? Maybe? Unfortunately though, it seems like the general consensus is that lionfish are here to stay. We're probably never gonna be able to get rid of them completely. So all we can do now is manage them, which is also kind of having mixed results. The most common tactic we've used to try to cull their numbers is just hunting them. Lionfish are totally edible, their flesh is not poisonous, but you do have to be careful handling them because you don't want to stab yourself. I've eaten lionfish and it's pretty good. They're a white fish and it reminds me a lot of tilapia. So, you know, if that sounds good to you, and you ever have the opportunity to try some lionfish, I highly recommend it. Hunting lionfish is mostly done by like divers who are willing to donate their time to hunting them. It's not done on a commercial level or anything like that, which again has yielded mixed results. In some areas, it does seem to have an effect on lionfish populations. In other areas, not so much. I've actually participated in lionfish hunting. I went diving in the Gulf of Mexico a few years ago and the dive shop I went with gave us spears and were like, if you see a lionfish, kill it on sight. I was very bad at spearing them and only did damage to the reefs we were diving around, so I stopped pretty quickly. But yeah, other divers that were much better at it than me caught and killed a lot of lionfish and we took some back to land with us to eat, but we also fed them to sharks that were around the reefs too. This was actually another proposed solution to the lionfish problem was trying to train predators in the area to eat them, but that's not gone great. Studies show that in general, predators native to the Gulf of Mexico just find lionfish too intimidating to eat. Like we only see predators eat them when the lionfish are injured or tethered to something. And we basically have to train every single individual predator fish in the area to eat lionfish. And that's not gonna happen, man. It's a nice idea, but pretty unrealistic. But like I said, we did feed the sharks lionfish that we caught on our dive. And it was really interesting because this wasn't the first time 
time divers had done that in this area, so the sharks would swim up to those who had spears, tap their head against the spears, then swim over to the reef, and then they'd swim back and tap their head against the spear again. And if you followed them, they would almost always lead you to a lionfish hiding in the reef, and then we'd spear it and feed it to the shark. Which I thought was super cool, but oh my god, you lazy, lazy, lazy sharks. Can't be bothered to hunt lionfish on your own, gotta get humans to do your dirty work for you, huh? Huh? When I've told people that story, some of them have said, oh, so you did manage to train some predators. And one, I would argue that they actually trained us. And two, we don't know if they ate lionfish when humans weren't around. And given the previous studies that I mentioned, they probably didn't. And because I know some people are going to be wondering this, yes, these sharks and also other predators like groupers can eat lionfish with no ill effects. But I do not know why. I could not find any explanations as to why they seem to be immune to lionfish venom. So lionfish kind of suck, but in defense of them, it's not their fault they've done damage to reefs in the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico. They weren't the ones that swam all the way from here to here. Humans brought them, and they're only doing what comes naturally. So despite their somewhat undeserved bad reputation, I do think that they are fascinating fish that deserve to be learned about. Thanks for watching another episode of Alien Ocean! And special thanks again to Brian the Man for offering to help out with this video. Uh, if you missed it, he helped out a ton with the last video about Vampire Squid, so go check that out if you haven't already. And also special thanks to Friscoborn. I haven't mentioned him a ton on my channel, but he's been here helping me with nearly every single video I've made, photoshopping stuff and giving me desperately needed feedback, and he's helped a lot with the coloring for these last two videos we've worked on, so thanks boys! couldn't have done it without you. And if you would like to help support us on this channel so we can continue making these videos, feel free to sign up over on our Patreon, where you can get access to videos hopefully at least a week early before it goes to the public, or your name in the beautiful credits, or maybe behind the scenes stuff. Kinda, I'm working on that. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Go follow me over on Twitter, even though at time of recording that website is kinda falling apart. And finally, today's interesting question of the day is, why why do you think no one's come up with a name for lionfish venom? Leave your wild conspiracy theories down in the comments, and until next time, this is your friendly neighborhood octopus lady reminding you that you don't need to go into space to find aliens.